Hello, friends. Uncle Marv here. And before you start this podcast, I wanted to let you know how things will be working over the next few shows. Normally, I do a weekly live show, but this particular set of shows is all going to be based around my time at the ASCII MSP Success Summit that was held this year in Miami, Florida, which is just a few minutes from my home. Usually when I go to ASCII, I will string together many different podcast uh, interviews and make them either one or two big shows. This year will be a little different. I'm going to release each interview that I did individually, and I just wanted to kind of let everybody know um, that I made that little change this year. I first also want to thank ASCII that uh, has been a very good friend of the show and has allowed me to, while I'm attending the conference, be able to get access to the vendors, CEOs, people that I normally would not have access to, and get them on the show for a few minutes. And sometimes we talk business, sometimes we talk other topics and uh, share anecdotes and stories of home and sports and stuff like that. But I do want to say thank you to ASCII for allowing that to happen. This year's show, as I mentioned, was in Miami. It was held August 23rd and 24th. So many of the upcoming episodes that you will hear will be from there. These are live on site, so they're not in a studio. So some of the episodes are going to sound a little airy because they were held out in the open area near registration where people are walking by and music is in the background and stuff like that. I've tried to clean up the shows as best I can, but just be aware that that is going to be um, a little bit different in the show, kind of like uh, a Super Bowl row of radio vendors when you go to um, see those events. Uh, This year, I did, uh, I think, nine interviews, and uh, I think they're all pretty good. If you are not a member of ASCII, you don't have to be to go to these shows. And for 2022, there are two more shows. Uh, One of them is going to be September 28th and 29th for New York and New Jersey, The last one of the year is going to be October 6th and 7th in Dallas, Texas. If you are near those areas and would like to attend, head to ASCIEvents.com. The link will be in the show notes, and I encourage you uh, to go to that event if you are close by. If you're not close by, uh, put this on your calendar to attend one next year. These are great events. You get much more closer access to vendors and CEOs. And uh, you really get to, you know, rub shoulders with people, have deeper conversations. I actually met several other MSPs and IT service providers in the area. We're going to be doing some individual and group meetups uh, coming up in the future and should be an ongoing thing. So those are the shows. Uh, Today's show is President and CEO Alan Weinberger. As per usual, I always start off the interviews with him. And he shares what's happened with ASCII in the last year and what's going to be coming up. There's a couple of great programs that I think you all are going to love. And with that, let's get on to the show. Hello, friends. Uncle Marv here with another episode of the IT Business Podcast. And this is a very special edition as we are live from ASCII Success. This time we are in Miami, Florida at the Marriott Marquis. And I, of course, am joined, as per usual, the first podcast of the event, Alan Weinberger of ASCII. Alan, how are you? Hello. I'm good, but the earphones, I'm not listening. I'm not hearing from the earphones. But everything is good here. Everything is good. So now it's good. There we go. All right. So, Alan, we are here. We are in a fantastic building with lovely weather in Miami. So, uh, how are things? Well, uh, it's great to be, Marvin, back with you. I've done this before, and uh, you're a stalwart of this industry, and everybody should listen to these podcasts because Marvin is a fountain of knowledge, expertise, and everything else. And this is a hell of a hotel, that's for sure. Yep. Well, a lot of my knowledge comes from ASCII, which I've been a member now six years, 
And I want to thank you for allowing me to stay a member. But let's go ahead. Uh, here we are in 2022. Last time we were in Orlando for 2021. So let's start off with what things have changed in ASCII over the last year. Well, firstly, uh, as far as numbers go, believe it or not, we've doubled our membership growth year over year. Um, and uh, I think that's part of the reason for our model in that uh, the MSPs want to be together, talk together, and connect to like-minded members. Uh, so we're going to double our membership growth this year over 2021. Um, and uh, that's sort of a good thing. Now, I don't know if you can tell me, but is that growth due to uh, more members entering the MSP community, more techs in the industry, or are people just now realizing ASCII's a great group and they should join? I think it's all of the above. I think, firstly, our marketing, <clears throat> Alicia Vetta, who's up in Ottawa, who's a very experienced lady for many years, uh, worked at Level Platforms before, She's doing a great job, so the word's out more, and that's, you know, part of the fact of any business. You've got to market. That's helping. Uh, I think, uh, well, the service sector, people are, you know, doing the service side of the industry less and less typical hardware, so the margins are higher, the profitability is higher. And I, the other thing is we're getting some very large members joining us for the first time in a while. That plus very rural members. We have members from towns of 10,000 people or less in places you've never heard of joining us. So that also uh, adds to the fact of I don't think anybody really knows how many MSPs are out there or how many people in the channel. CompTIA does surveys every year and claims there are about a half a million total, including one-person shops, that will be doing some type of a service support of IT. But maybe the other conventional thing is about 70,000 MSPs in the United States. Well, whatever the numbers are, um, we're getting a diverse uh, universe joining us ever, this last year. Interesting. So I've noticed when I get my newsletters every Friday, uh, there are more and more vendor programs becoming available to us. And some of them new vendors, some of them veteran vendors. Uh, that has been a huge undertaking. Is that you know, your ASCII staff going out and asking for more, or are vendors now coming back to ASCII saying, hey, you guys have great membership, can we access them? Well, you know, Jerry Katavis and uh, Jesse Devine work on the membership side. They could probably answer it better than I can, but it's probably both. Uh, I mean, we're known, so vendors come. I mean, for example, CAB out of Israel, but they're all over the world. They fly in from Israel to each of these events. So the vendors see the value of the, the coming in from all over the world to come to these events. It's a long flight just to spend two hours to meet with, two, I'm sorry, two days to meet with MSPs. Um, <clears throat> so they, 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 you know, this is the customer and a lot of them sell through the channel only. So you got to be with your customers. And it's also the fact of, you know, the virtual meetings just aren't as real as the face-to-face -face meetings and people, you know, the customers want to meet the vendors and the vendors want to meet customers. The only way to do is face-to-face. -face. As much technology is out there and everybody's using technology to make their living, they still want to see who they're paying their money from and who they're getting their sales from. Right. Well, speaking of face-to-face, -face, I know that members are coming here to see the vendors, but we had a very lively member meeting this morning and I don't know, I think there were 30 of us in the room, and it was very engaging and almost to the point where people were just thirsty to talk to other members and find out what's going on in the community. Now, as far as I know, ASCII's always done that uh, in our forum, the List Forum, uh, but to have these events where members can engage with each other, uh, to me, that seems invaluable. Uh, how did you... Uh, take that this morning? Well, that's a great question. I'll, I'll put it at a 50,000 foot level and then come down to the level we're at, which is on terra firma, it's a, the earth. The 50,000 foot level, the, the augmented reality, virtual reality, Meta changed his name from Facebook. How much are, we're not going to need face to face events because everything could be virtual someplace. Uh, it looks like it's real, but it's not real. 
is that going to change the way civilization makes business? I would personally say no, because these face-to-face events are not virtual and they're not virtual reality. So that's just an interesting thing, how the world's going to go in the next five or ten years if everything's going to be so virtual now in an augmented way. Um, no one knows, but I'd say no, because I think the humans still want to meet with humans. Uh, so that's the example of an ASCII meeting. You're meeting with people, um, you know them, and you really feel for them. Because we're, the, the, the humanity of us all is we want to be with other people. And then we know the person when we're with somebody. You hug somebody, you shake a hand, and that's what they all do at these events. And our meeting is the same way. So it's interesting, especially this time with a company like Facebook changed its name to Meta because they think the world's going to change according to the way they want it to change. Interesting concept. So I, I, anyway, All right. I don't want to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> so a new uh, program also in ASCII is Spark, a program that you guys just recently started, um, a peer-to-peer group, but there's a little bit of a twist uh, on the traditional peer group. Can you describe that for, for yeah. us? Yeah. That actually argues everything against what I just said about the need of having virtual anything. So, you know, there's always on the one hand and on the other hand. Right. Well, on the other hand, we have Spark. (laughs) And Spark is a virtual event where 10 members that are non-competitive in different geographies but are similar in size can help together, learn together, and the cliche all boats rise together where it's free-flowing and a vendor will spend some time in the beginning to introduce its new technology to the members. But most of it's, it's just a repartee back and forth by members learning from each other about whatever they want to talk about. It's fairly free-flowing, uh, whether there's one session might be only certain technology. It's not a gripe session. It's not going to just me, gripe about vendors, but it's a, it's a learning session. But it's self-learning, peer-to-peer learning, no cost if you're a member. It's, it's free. We have 15 groups now of 10 each, so we've got 150 members participating, and the staff just is a facilitator, they just organize it, you know, but it's not, uh, there's no lectures, it's not like going to school and lecturing. And here's another thing, in a lot of ways the best way of learning is by peers, because what you learn in school five or ten years ago is no connection to what's going on day to day, but you can learn from your peers day to day because they're selling day to day stuff. All right. So it's a good concept, yeah. All right. Well, that's great. Um, I want to make sure that we get in this one last bit of uh, information. When we last spoke last year, you had just put out your book, The Doctor's yes. In. Yes. Uh, how has that been over the last year? Well, I'm not in the business of making money in books. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing road shows. I'm not doing anything else. But our members have picked it up, and it's a good quick read for end users to see how important the channel is, what ASCII's role in the channel is, and uh, the title of the book is Doctors In because it analogizes how the medical world should do preemptive care, how people live, a, you know, prevent disease by living a good lifestyle. And the same thing is in the IT industry, prevent attacks before they happen by having a good managed service provider, keep your technology up to speed and prevent bad things from happening before they happen. So... And that, the concept of the book is to show the parallel between the medical industry and the IT industry. There's a new industry, at least the industry as it has developed since Microsoft came out with the deal with IBM on the PC side. It's been around before. The mainframes, we're not talking about mainframes. We're talking about the channel. And the channel is relatively new for the universe, and but the medical industry is not. So we're going to hopefully replicate what the medical industry is doing. But you've got to go to your local doctor for care. For your, for your body, you got to go to your local MSP for care to your IT infrastructure. Okay. So that was, I don't want to say foretelling. I think a lot of people looked at that book as a new view into how we should be acting. Um, anything for this year? Do you have any views as to, you know, how we need to rethink things uh, for this upcoming year or in, in years to come? Um, well, I think... Again, it's almost like 10 or 15 years ago. Some big vendors, maybe like Amazon, will try and say, we can do it all. We'll do local service. Verizon, you know, we don't need the channel. 
Um, so that's going to be out there because big companies run by big money is going to try and make wherever they can, make a, make a buck. Uh, and maybe some of this is happening in the medical industry where hospital chains are buying small um, doctor's practices and controlling the doctors more than they did in the past. I think it's not good for the consumer of IT if every MSP is owned by somebody and they're not autonomous anymore where they can't really do what's best for the customer. Same thing with a local doctor. The local doctor runs his own practice. You know he's going to do what's best for his customer. If you're just an employed by some big monolith and you, you're going to have to follow different rules than you might want to follow, you're going to start not doing what's best for the customer. So if that consolidation is going to happen, it, it probably will be attempted to happen again like it happened in this industry maybe 10 or 15 years ago where some big players try to say they could do local service. Uh, that That's something to watch out for. Yes, it is. Um well, folks, uh, here we are in Miami at the ASCII Success Summit. The Metropolitan Grand Ballroom is where we are. So if you hear us a little airy, it's because we're here on the main conference room floor. Uh, Alan, I know that you're going to be uh, swamped with people <laughs> wanting to talk to you. So I appreciate the few minutes that you've given me here. And uh, looking forward to a good conference. Martin, thank you very much. Uh, it's a learning experience for everybody here, that's for sure. All right. All right, folks, I'll be coming back with more episodes live from ASCII. Until then, holla.